A test driver's assignments aren't always easy, but they're designed to prove the car's capabilities under widely varying conditions. Our high-speed track is built for maximum performance and durability tests. Other assignments have us putting a car through its paces under handling conditions. Torturous tests bring out the ruggedness and performance in a car. But out on the highway, we have to cope with additional circumstances that test a driver's ability, and which always seem to bring out the best or the worst in a driver. That's the reason for this assignment critical driving patterns. We'll be driving under unfavorable conditions, those critical times when good habits pay off. We'll be investigating the value of the decision pattern under adverse driving conditions. And the importance of correctly identifying critical clues to prevent trouble before it begins. To do that, we'll be looking at what happens when our driving pattern is threatened by three things. A sudden loss of vision, steering or braking, even all three at once. On the proving ground, it's not so bad. No traffic to worry about, no real surprises on the track. But what if this happens out on the highway? The situation may become critical. While I couldn't see, my car wheels went off the pavement. That means difficult steering and uneven braking. I need to slow down gradually, staying in position with my right wheels off the pavement. When my speed's down, I scan the scene and check behind for clearance. I then turn sharply back onto the road to get my right wheels over the pavement's edge. No panic, no frantic steering. I knew my positioning in traffic before the unexpected happened. The trouble was, I made a mistake. I short-circuited the decision pattern, missed the critical clue. I failed to realize soon enough that the underpass was flooded. That error made the driving task more difficult. Things happen too fast. What is the basic driving task? How can I explain it? As a driver, I'm usually confronted with 10 or more highway and traffic events each second. At least two of these events are relevant to the driving task and will have to be observed each second. A few of these events will require a decision on my part. And these decisions will demand that I take some kind of action from 30 to 120 times a minute. If my steering, speed control, and positioning are accurate, conflicts will be avoided. But research also indicates that most drivers make at least one minor driving error every two minutes. And a critical error which could lead to this every hour or two. The real expert's critical errors are years apart. The skilled driver minimizes errors and, in turn, the chance of a collision. That's why a habitual decision pattern approach to solving driving problems is important. It'll keep us out of trouble when the unexpected happens. You see, when an unfavorable situation arises and threatens us with an emergency, here's what happens. The initial alert indicating something is wrong may be followed immediately by your point of decision, with no time left for steps two, three, and four. The skilled driver does not allow himself to be caught by surprise in the first place. Here's a good example of the initial alert and point of decision crowding up on each other, regaining control when a skid starts, like knowing how to turn your wheels into a skid takes experience and a lot of seat-of-the-pants driving. We won't teach you that in this film. The important thing is to know how to prevent a skid. You do that by reading the critical clues that mean there's trouble ahead, and then by making decisions soon enough to minimize the problem. Learn to read the scene. Recognize patterns that provide critical clues indicating braking, steering, or visibility problems. Clues like these. Changes in pavement colorings can mean different coefficients of friction, oil, water, ice. All can produce skids. Shaded areas can mean wet, slippery leaves on the pavement, water, frost, or ice, or hidden gravel. 
bridges, overpasses, and underpasses ice up and frost up first, melt last. In winter, snow falling from trees can suddenly blot out the road ahead if it hits and sticks to your windshield. Wet pavements are as slippery as ice. The first of a rain washes oil and road grease to the surface. Water on the road can cause hydroplaning. The wheels, at higher speeds, float on the surface of the water. You can't steer. Dips in the road and underpasses can be flooded. Actions of approaching cars and of cars ahead could have tipped me off in our first example. Few things happen in driving without any warning at all. Critical clues can provide you valuable time and space to adjust your speed and maintain control. On the road, your car takes a beating too. In addition to following the regular maintenance schedule, check for worn tires that lead to flats and blowouts or that indicate alignment and steering problems. Low, pulling or squealing brakes that demand immediate attention. And unless you're a service technician, get a pro to give your car a safety check. One defect can lead to another. You have to see danger in order to avoid it. Just as you have to be able to spot critical clues and drive a car that responds properly to cope with their warnings. And there are other factors to help you understand yourself and your condition as a driver. For one reason or another, you're not as sharp some days as you should be. Many factors can influence your driving performance. Inattention, fatigue, boredom, alcohol, drugs. They all can dull your driving edge, lower your skill. In combination, they can kill you. There are even critical clues that you're far from your best. You have difficulty keeping your vehicle in its lane. You find yourself surprised by unexpected situations. You forget your rear view mirror or turn signal or you forget you're on high beam. You unconsciously creep up on the car ahead until you have to brake suddenly. That's the time to get out from behind that wheel. Let someone else take over the driving, or just take a break. And even when you think you're fully alert, research has shown that you may still be easily distracted. Are you neglecting the basic rules of strategic positioning in traffic? Are you finding the proper gap for each maneuver you make? Giving the other driver a break when he needs it. Meanwhile, learn to gain for yourself critical time and space necessary in thinking through any type of driving situation. Spot the critical clues that will help you most in your decision pattern. Anticipate the other driver's actions and adjust your own driving accordingly. You'll find driving not only safer, but a lot more enjoyable.